Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and in this video, I'm going to describe some basics about electrical materials. So we have kind of seen already that when you look at all the materials and elements that we have available to us on Earth, uh, there are some atoms that allow their electrons to move freely to neighboring atoms, and we tend to call these the metals. Okay, so in the periodic table, most most elements are are metals, but in electricity, we call materials that are very very good at allowing current to flow conductors and so when we say conductors that's not all metals make good conductors but there are some that are extremely good at allowing their electrons to move to other neighbors so we tend to use a specific or a certain number of these elements and, and also compounds in order to create the materials that we use to move electricity around specifically current uh, some of the other things that we need, there might be a really good conductor within the periodic table, but it has to be something that has other properties that make it usable, such as malleability, so it can bend, so you don't, it's not brittle, so we can make wires out of it that can be bent, and also oxide resistant, which is nice, uh, to, so it doesn't rust continually, even though some other conductors we do use do rust, but some of these physical properties, the mechanical properties that make them ideal for actually building systems. And then, of course, it has to be abundant. You can't have something that's very rare that is very expensive to mine uh, and then try to build you know something that requires a lot of that material so it has to be abundant so in electricity or electrical engineering uh, the the most popular conductors that we tend to use are copper aluminum and gold now gold is is more expensive but it is a fantastic conductor it doesn't uh, doesn't oxidize it doesn't rust uh, and so even though it's expensive we do use it in a lot of electronics in fact in almost most electronics uh, then if you look at other materials so you can't just always have conductors you have to also uh, resist you know electricity from flowing where you don't want it so that we use other materials that don't allow their electrons to move freely to their neighbors and so if in the periodic table you have these things called nonmetals, and at the atomic level you can look at a, an element and say well it it resists you know electrons being stripped away or being added to it uh, but when we look at these materials what we want is a material that's called an insulator and that is something that doesn't allow current to flow or it doesn't yeah basically resist the flow of electricity now conductors uh, <clears throat> tend to be made of just pure elements so you talk about gold you know it's just gold or aluminum it's just aluminum uh, or copper it's just copper but when you look at insulators they tend to be made of compounds so we don't necessarily have like a, a specific element that we use directly as a uh, as an insulator uh, some of the popular insulators are ceramics uh, also rubber and plastic so if you think about like power lines when you drive down the road, you'll see these these uh, these conductors hanging off of these poles. Take a look at what they're hanging from. Those little things that they're hanging from, the hook, uh, those are ceramic. So we need a way to grab onto the, the conductor that's transmitting a lot of current and not conduct into the pole. And so ceramics are used to build these insulators that can hold onto the wire but also won't conduct electricity, okay? And then of course, when you think about plastics and rubbers, just think about wires. So we've all probably seen a wire by now. They typically have a coating around them. So that's kind of like a rubber or plastic coating that allows us to be able to touch the conductor without getting electricity that flows into us or in influencing the electricity. And it also prevents the electricity from shorting out or touching some other conductor and having the electricity go somewhere where you don't want it. Okay, and then the third class was uh, materials that are kind of right in the middle, right? So they can allow their electrons to flow freely with their neighbors and kind of not. So these were the semi-metals, but in electrical engineering and electronics, these materials are what we call semiconductors. So you probably heard that term. This is a very, very important class of materials for computers and uh, electronics in general. So some popular semiconductors are going to be silicon, germanium, gallium arsenide. Silicon is by far and away the most popular semiconductor because it's so abundant. So a, a huge majority of the Earth's crust is made of silica. And so silicon is what all, almost all uh, integrated circuits that are in your phones and on, in your computers are made of. It's very abundant, it has great properties, and so we build most electronics onto those. Let's just, one last thing I'd like to mention about semiconductors. Semiconductors are 
critical. Okay, so semiconductors are what we use to build modern electronics, your smartphones, your computers. Um, they're, they're very important, so I want to just spend a little bit more time kind of explaining them. A semiconductor is, you know, when people talk about semiconductor, it's like, well, it's right in the middle of a conductor and, a semi and an insulator. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of true, but there's a little more to it. So the technical definition of a semiconductor is at absolute zero, so zero degrees Kelvin, it's an insulator. Okay, so current does not flow through it. But as you increase the temperature, it becomes more and more conductive. Okay, so it changes its conductivity with temperature. And we are interested as humans uh, with materials where that transition to being like kind of mostly an insulator to mostly a conductor, we are interested in the temperature range about where we live. There are certainly semiconductors where that transition happens at like one degree Kelvin, but that's just too cold for us to be practical, to build anything practical out of it. So we want materials that make that transition in the temperatures that humans live. Guess what does that? Silicon, right? So that's a, it's a beautiful semiconductor. Uh, when we can, when this transition occurs within the temperatures that we, you know, live in, then what we can do with electrical engineering is we can manually cause this transition to occur. So one of the things that you can do is you can insert other materials into the semiconductor to make it either an insulator or a conductor. So some of the common things are if you start with like a silicon silicon uh, wafer is what we call it, but a thin piece of silicon, you can actually add metals to it. You can plate metals on it like aluminum or copper and it'll bond to that silicon. And so you can actually lay down uh, wires or traces that are conductive. And so that allows you to route current and uh, route electricity through, across the, the silicon semiconductor and move electrons. Uh, another thing you can do is you can implant impurities into the material. And so you can actually dig, you can basically like almost change like uh, wells within the, within the piece of silicon into conductive regions by implanting uh, impurities or what we call dopants. So in this example, arsenic is a very common co common uh, common element that you'll actually uh, shoot into silicon in order to turn it from a semiconductor which isn't really good at, at either being an insulator or a conductor and we make it conductive okay and then another thing you can do to make insulators on a silicon die or a silicon wafer is you can actually just use oxygen so it turns out that silicon will oxidize when you expose it to oxygen and it'll build it'll build something called silicon dioxide and that turns out to be a really good insulator. And so right away you can you have ways to make, you know, conductors and insulators on a semiconductor by just joining it up with other materials. The second thing that we can do that is just amazing is we can actually use a voltage to cause this switch between a conductor and an insulator to happen. So when we come along, we can apply a voltage across certain regions of a semiconductor and we can actually pull electrons and holes different ways and we can get them in a form where we can basically make a conductor out of it. And then we can do the opposite and we can push the, the basically the charge into different regions so that it becomes an insulator. And when we do this with a voltage, we now have the basis of modern electronics, which is the transistor. A transistor is essentially a switch that you can turn on and off with a voltage. And once you do that, you can start building circuits that will react to stimulus and produce predictable results. And that's the whole field of circuit design and electronics within electrical engineering. Okay, so just to review, with these three groups of materials, so the conductors, insulators, and semiconductors, we can build all of the electronics, computers, and electrical devices devices that we have on planet Earth. Okay, so that is a summary of electrical materials. See ya.